Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, the, the reason that uh, we're here this morning is to uh, remind people as we get closer to the end of the school holiday period um, about the ongoing dangers associated with road safety and, and driving on regional roads in particular. Uh, people would probably be aware that we've uh, lost 43 people on our roads so far this year. Uh, in comparison to 55 last year, and whilst we're encouraged by the lower number of lives lost, there's no good year when any life is lost on South Australian roads. Um, this year in particular as well, what we're seeing is a higher instance of the number of people speeding, and certainly speeding being a higher contributing cause in the lives lost on our roads and also serious injuries. Traditionally what we see is that inattention or distraction has certainly played a big part in the number of people who are killed uh, on our roads. But as I said, this year speeding is uh, at the moment um, the leading contributing cause to why people are dying on our roads. That is closely followed by distraction and inattention. And when you look at regional roads in particular, um, two out of three lives lost on country roads are country people. When you add that to the mix, um, that we have uh, school holidays finishing and a large number of people potentially driving back uh, from country areas uh, to the city to home, or even country people driving back from the city uh, to their regional homes, the increase in volume and traffic, along with the ongoing dangers um, on our regional roads, is why we're um, imploring people as we come towards the end of the holidays to make sure that you stay safe uh, on our roads. Now clearly, when you are uh, driving at speed on country roads, or if you're not paying attention, um, a split-second decision can have catastrophic uh, consequences. And we've seen over the last uh, week or so, uh, two deaths on our roads in the regions. Uh, and last year, uh, we also saw two deaths during the same holiday period, and there were 42 people um, who suffered serious injuries. And the serious injuries is something uh, that we need to keep reinforcing, because these are often lifelong injuries that require ongoing support, ongoing medical treatment, uh, and ongoing impacts on families more broadly as well. So the message is quite simple. Um, don't take risks on our roads, uh, particularly as you're driving home uh, from the school holiday period. Make sure that you plan your trip, plan well ahead, allow for any delays uh, potentially caused by roadworks because there are a number of roadworks out in the regional areas as well. And don't allow yourself to become frustrated potentially if your trip is delayed. Um, that's when we know people uh, tend to take unnecessary risks and when you take unnecessary risks you place yourself, uh, your family and those others on the roads uh, at significant risk of either being killed or seriously injured. Um, one of the other um, aspects I guess that's important to emphasise is that uh, nearly a third of the lives lost so far um, this year um, have been as a result of speeding, that's 14 people have lost their lives and over 70 percent, so about 72 percent of the lives lost have been on regional roads as well. So while it's not something that is just on regional roads, that's the focus and the emphasis uh, for this remaining week. I mean, a reminder also for people that uh, at the beginning of next week, as uh, kids go back to school, there will be a really strong enforcement uh, element to making sure that as people return to school, um, that they are also uh, kept safe um, by making sure that people on the roads and in and around schools uh, are also doing the right thing. So please, uh, the message from the South Australia Police is um, don't let this school holiday uh, become a tragedy for you and your family. Make sure you plan your trip well ahead of time. Make sure that you obey the road rules and do the right thing uh, and arrive home safely. Thank you. I might just hand over to the Minister. Yeah, the government wants to reinforce the police's message. Uh, as people are returning from a well-earned break at, on the school holidays, please take care on the roads. Uh, we don't want any more lives lost uh, during this holiday period. Um, uh, the majority of lives lost are on regional roads and as people are returning back from holidays, take care, uh, don't speed and take care of each other on the roads. Um, yeah, every life lost affects a family and affects a community, so uh, we would encourage everyone returning from school holidays to take as much care as they can on the roads. As uh, the Assistant Commissioner said, uh, two thirds of those who die on regional roads are people from the regions. So, it's, as, so it's uh, locals whose lives are lost 
uh, when care is not taken. But it's also those who are returning from our regional areas during the school, the school holiday period uh, who I think uh, uh, need to take extra care with the high volumes uh, of traffic on the roads during school holidays. So uh, our message is quite simple. Please take care. Um, speeding does uh, cause accidents. It's the leading cause at the moment of road fatalities in South Australia. So keep the speeds down and take care as you return from holidays. Thank you. Um, as the stats bear out, the Assistant Commissioner, obviously this heavily skewing towards fatal crashes on, uh, on regional roads, do you feel that the message is just not being heeded out there in country South Australia? Uh, look, this is one of the, the things we found in our market research, is, and it's why we put that specific marketing campaign out about two and three deaths on country roads of country people. You know, we talk about the fatal five, um, so um, drink, drug driving, we talk about inattention, speeding, seatbelts. Uh, you know, seatbelts are just beggars' belief these days as to why people do not wear a seatbelt. Um, but, you know, in some of our most recent crashes, we're still seeing people are not wearing seatbelts. It's a simple thing that can, that can actually save your life. So I think the message is getting through, um, but it's not getting through clear enough. And I think this is the reason why we really want to emphasise it this week, is that when you're out and about driving on regional roads, you're already at a high speed generally. So you're on a 100 or 110 kilometre an hour road. If you don't pay attention to what you're doing, if you become tired or you take risks at that speed, it is going to end in tragedy. There is, we've seen it time and time again, and that's why we're imploring people to do the right things on our roads. And one of the main things that uh, I think irks people when you're, when you're returning from a long trip or you're part way through a long trip, is you plan to be somewhere by a certain time and if you start getting delayed or you get behind time, that's when people can start to become frustrated. That's when they start to take risks. And with the extra traffic on the road, it's just not worth it. If we look forward to, to the return to school next week, can we expect to see a target of blitz around school zones focused on speeding and potentially drug driving and drink driving? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next week as we return to school, there will be a specific dedicated operation uh, across the state. So it's not just metro based, it'll be right across the state targeting school zones and people driving in and around school zones so that we do our part and make sure that everybody else who's on the roads does their part to keep um, our kids, our teachers and parents who are around schools safe as, uh, as we return to school. Assistant Commissioner, we hear similar messages most school holidays and long weekends. But what, can actually, what could actually be, be done about stopping fatalities on the road? Will there be more police? Um, you know, will there be more traffic police? Yeah, so essentially uh, every school holidays, um, because we know that there's more traffic on the roads, because that then elevates the risk potentially, particularly in regional areas, um, there are a dedicated focus of our people on road safety so that, um, you know, again I remind people that um, every single police car can pull you over anytime, anywhere, um, any day, of, any day of, uh, sorry, any time of the day or night. So it's not about... You know, trying to avoid an RBT, it's not about getting a text message from a mate as you leave a pub saying there's an RBT around the corner. You know, regardless of that, we're aware of that. So it may well be that we're setting up a, an RBT in a certain location and then we have other, other police resources nearby trying to actually pick up those people who think they're smart enough to get around it. So, and at the end of the day, if you do get caught, you do lose your licence, your vehicle gets impounded for a period of time, that's probably the best outcome for you because we've potentially saved your life if you, if you leave somewhere to drink or drug driving. It's, it's just uh, something that comes up in the, in the lives lost and, and serious injuries all the time. People know you shouldn't do it. Some people still take risks. If you take a risk, you'll get caught. Have you any update on the cause? I know it's very early days, but the cause of the fatal unique Mount Gambia yesterday being a regional road? Uh, so that's still being investigated in terms of uh, what led to the, uh, to the crash itself. We do know it is a head-on crash. Um, so, but one vehicle was um, veered onto the other side of the road and, and, and had a head-on crash. Um, but it's, it's one of those things that emphasises again that if you're on a regional road in a 100 or 110 k zone, um, if you are distracted, if something happens in the vehicle um, and you end up on the wrong side of the road, it only takes a split second uh, for it to end in tragedy. And, you know, I think it was the week before we had a, a serious injury crash on York Peninsula with a mother and, and three kids in the car and another person, again, a head-on crash. Now, while that's still being investigated, what it says is that you can be the best driver in the world. You can be taking absolutely every precaution, but it only takes a split second for something like this to happen, particularly on country roads. And that's where we actually want to try and really reinforce with people is, 
it's not necessarily the bad drivers that are, uh, are getting killed on their roads. Certainly they are um, getting, uh, certainly people are dying and, and they're being injured. But it's the good drivers that have that one momentary lapse of concentration, that one moment of frustration that ends in tragedy and it happens just like that. And that's what we really want to try and get the message home. We've seen in other jurisdictions around the country the double demerits and things like that. Would that be something that could be explored or looked at to potentially bring down the, the road toll, a, a harsh punishment for those doing the wrong thing? Um, so, yeah, double demerits has been mentioned a number of times before. It, it's something that um, has been considered previously. Um, we have actually increased uh, penalties in the various um, offences that are available uh, within the current legislation. So. Um, extreme speeding, for example, is now, you know, we recognise as criminal behaviour because driving at those really extreme speeds is criminal behaviour and so people will be treated as such. Um, the immediate loss of licence for various offences such as drug driving, drink driving, etc. You know, these types of things are already harsher penalties that are, are in place to make sure that, you know, people do do the right thing and are discouraged from it. And, you know, having to actually... Um, uh, to pay to retrieve your vehicle from a from a, um, it being impounded as well. You know, these are big consequences for people, and these are some of the things that are put in place that are designed to deter people from doing the wrong from doing the wrong thing. Assistant Commissioner, just on another note, we spoke to the Commissioner this morning, but are there any further updates on the group charges? No, look, I don't have any further updates. I think that you know the Deputy Commissioner and the Commissioner have spoken extensively on that particular issue at the moment, so no, I don't have any further anything further. Assistant Commissioner, if you just track back, just quickly just to road, I've seen some, uh, some vision uh, being sent in of a car uh, at a level crossing um, making its way around the boot gates while they were down, narrowly missing a, a collision with a, with a train. Uh, thoughts on acts of stupidity like that? Uh, look, I actually haven't, haven't seen that, that footage, but um, uh, anyone that drives around a, a level crossing with the boom gates already down is an idiot. Uh, you know, everyone knows that the, the reason the boom gates are down is because a train is coming. Sometimes people think that they can outrun trains, or um, but you know, it, it is it is absolutely stupid behaviour. Um, what's going through someone's mind, and why they actually have to get somewhere so quickly, but they can't wait for a train for two or, two or three minutes? Uh, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so look, we actually have had, um, when, we, when we put new uh, road safety campaigns out, we do a, an evaluation of how much reach um, those campaigns are getting. Um, and so we've put out, I think, about nine campaigns over about the last 12 to 18 months. And of those campaigns, they're all designed to target specific um, behaviours and, and risk takers on our road. So we looked at the selfish prick driving campaign, which you know deliberately targeted 20 to 40 year old males. Had great reach into that market segment in terms of people actually got the message. Over two and three country um, deaths on country roads for country drivers. That again has had a really good reach into the market. Um, and then we've got some testimonials uh, that are out in the workplace as well. Uh, sorry, out, um, out in the media and social media at the moment as well. You know, these are tragic stories told by families, told by emergency services workers about, um, in both cases, young lives lost and the impact that it's had on the families. Uh, in one instance, the impact that it's had on the driver who killed his mate. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of information out there and the, the feedback that we get from the market research is, is that the penetration is quite good. So we're going to continue to go down this line where we actually reach out to people and say, you know, we know this cohort of people, this is, you know, what your behaviours are more than likely to be and this is why we're targeting you and this is how we're targeting you. So the message is getting out there. Um, but as we say time and time again, unfortunately, um, you know, one life lost in our road is, is, is one too many. Um, there's no good year in road safety because um, someone has lost a family member, someone's lost a friend, someone's lost a community member. So... Um, you know, it, it's something that we just continue to work on for our part, but everybody can play a part on our roads and keeping everyone safe. Assistant Commissioner, can you just take me through, you were talking about uh, more police around schools, can you just talk me through that a bit more about, you know, why, how many more police in schools like across the state, is it only schools, is there going to be more police some, in other locations? Uh, yeah, look, so again, um, Commensurate with what's happening in our community at various times, we have certain road safety operations that run around the year. So we know that um, when uh, kids go back to school that um, we want to have a higher 
um, focus on enforcement um, around our school zones so that we do our part to keep people safe and keep the kids safe and teachers and everyone else going back to school. So what that means is that we have a dedicated police operation, dedicated police resources focusing on the school over and above our general duties and our, and our general attention that we pay to school every single day, every single week anyway. And it really does then coincide with that public messaging as well. Um, so the enforcement's one part, the public messaging is the other part to say, just remember, kids are going back to school next week, it's going to be busy, um, pay extra care. Can we go back to the Attorney General? Um, People have raised concerns with the Department of Child Protection and they are unsatisfied with how that has been handled, those concerns from those reports have been handled. What can people do? Yeah, I'm that's, you probably appreciate, Rory. I'm not going to go into any of the specifics about the, the, the tragic death. And I think you know, everyone, you know, every human, when they see or read of you know, a, a tragic loss, unnecessary loss of such a young, innocent life is you know, profoundly touched and you know, certainly we're no different in, as ministers and as the government as a whole. But you know, I won't go into any specific details. I think it's been touched upon quite a lot that there is now a, a police task force and that uh, you know, I, I, all of us would hate to inadvertently do or say something that could jeopardise um, a criminal investigation. And uh, yeah, it, it, I, I suspect it's very likely the coroner will also investigate. There is a um, Department of Premier and Cabinet review taking place as well as the, own, the department's own internal investigations. Well, at, at the end of the day, if, if people are unsatisfied about um, um, yeah, the actions of any one public sector, there, there is an ombudsman that, uh, that people can uh, go to with, with complaints about uh, things that are taking place. But um, yeah, there is a report notification line, and uh, yeah, if anyone has concerns, I'd urge anyone to yeah, make the report of concerns they have, and then, if, if needed, if they're unsatisfied, to follow that up uh, with the complaints line. And of course, the, the, there is a resort to the ombudsman about uh, government's actions. I guess the challenge here, though, in general, is the timeliness, and, and that takes time. And we know that these particular matters relating to child protection can be time sensitive. So. Do, does there need to be consideration for further mechanisms to, to provide more timely help when problems like this arise? Yeah, ab ab it, it is something that uh, will be looked at in terms of you know, the, the processes in place in this particular case, but systemically how um, uh, things are reported. That, that's why we've got you know, the, the lead agency of government, the Department of Premier and Cabinet, uh, conducting a review, and you know, that will look at you know, all the, the, you know, the processes, all the things that have happened in this particular case, but also be able to have that across government view about, you know, and to make recommendations about the best way to, you know, as much as we can, uh, ensure that we don't see a uh, tragedy like this again and put in place those processes and procedures to protect children as much as we possibly can. I guess there are four departments that are under the spotlight, but specifically, does Kathy Taylor have the government support? Oh, look, I, I, I'm not going to comment sp specifically about any of the details of this particular case. Um, that a number of ministers have had an initial briefing, including myself as Attorney General and Acting Police Minister. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm we're not going to go into any of the specific details of, yeah, of of any particular department's involvement. I think quite rightly there there is a a police task force set up, and I think yeah, but I, I wouldn't want to say or do anything that. Yeah, you know, could jeopardise or could influence the witnesses to that uh, to that case. I completely understand that, but do you, do you understand? I guess the public's need for answers and uh, frustration. Look, look, absolutely. Uh, as I said at the start, yeah, you know, every human being who reads about these sorts of tragedies, yeah, you what know, wants answers, wants to understand, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, what more could we possibly do to protect innocent lives? And certainly, yeah, that's why there is a police investigation. That's why I suspect there'll be a coronial inquest and that, that uh, look by the, the lead agency of the state government about you know, what government does in these circumstances. We know that this was a particularly troubled family. Um, uh, are you aware of if the children were offered any counselling or support following their exposure to domestic violence? Do you know what shape that took and which agency provided that assistance? Yeah, look, Roy, I'm, I'm not aware of the, the, the fine-grained details, but uh, even if I were, I suspect um, 
you know, they would be details that are going to be properly investigated by authorities, including the police, including potentially the coroner. So uh, yeah, uh, again, I, I would be very, very loath to, um, to explore details that are being properly investigated at that first instance by the police. Considering what we have seen in, in years and, and, and repeated instances, do you, uh, where there have been problems with the child protection system, um, we think back to circumstances around Chloe Valentine um, uh, and the, the, the Ricky Wilson Gillia circumstance as well. Do you think there are appropriate mechanisms in place in South Australia for grandparents to receive greater support to provide you know, assistance to get their grandchildren out of circumstances like this? Yeah, I, I know we have seen over time, as a result of a number of reports and as a result of a number of instances, reforms, um, significant increases in funding in recent years in the child protection system. And we, you know, we will look at you know, what comes out of the, the reviews and the investigations that are happening now. And if, if there are you know, further supports and, and extra or different processes, that's certainly something the government will look at. And, and like obviously, as the state's chief lawmaker, that includes any further legislative reform. That is something that, that may need to be considered off the bat of what comes out of these police investigations and also the, the DPC review. Yes, certainly. For the particularly the DPC review, review but anything that uh, is thrown up as a result of a coronial inquest, if that happens, or a criminal police investigation that are suggested legislative reforms, that is something you know, we, we will look at. But not just you know, what the law says and if that needs changing, but how you know, the, the, the policies and the legislation is currently interpreted and implemented. I think um, you mentioned additional funding, but anyone who works in this space will simply say there's not enough money. Is that something that you need to look at as a matter of urgency? Yeah, that, that, that's a really good point. It, it's not simply the amount of dollars that are put into a system uh, and, and something as critical as protecting those who can't protect themselves, like children in the child protection system, but also, very important, is yeah, the, the policies and procedures, how that money's used, how effectively it's used, and, uh, and, and what people do within that system. Just back to my initial line of questioning about avenues of not necessarily appeal, but for lack of a better term, if people are, uh, are unsatisfied with how the department is handling that. Do you think there does need to be, a, 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 in your opinion, at least a specific um, person there and another independent body to people could potentially go to if they do have concerns about child protection matters? Yeah, I've, I've heard that raised yeah, in, in the media today as well as uh, uh, your question to hear, Rory. That I'm sure that's something that will be looked at and considered as part of a review. Yeah, there are. I know that there are many, many reports that are made to the the hotline at the moment. But um, yeah, whether there needs to be you know, anything on top of or further than that that sits below you know, a report to the ombudsman, I'm sure will be uh, looked at. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.